Okay, let's turn our Bibles to book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. 13 and 14. It should be a familiar verses to you. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. The title of the message is No Turning Back. No Turning Back. No Turning Back. The Bible says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. No turning back. It's a very simple topic. However, it's very hard thing to do. You and I have come from many different places. For some, you had to go through a lot more than the others. For some, you didn't have to face as many adversities in your life. However, everyone, everyone, when you weren't saved, you had that old nature, you had that flesh, you had the world and the devil constantly, constantly working you upside down making you sin over and over and over. Sad thing is that so many Christians still go through that old cycle. It's unfortunate. It's not just people go to church and do nothing. It happens to preachers, preachers' wives. It happens to people of faith. It's where you really don't want to turn back because if you turn around, you know what's going to be there. Just like Lot's wife, she weren't supposed to turn back. But things of the world, she was entangled with the world. And she turned back and turned into a pillar of salt. When you turn back, there are consequences in your life. If you have decided to follow Jesus, and if you have decided to really, really commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have decided to go out there and be a good testimony for Lord Jesus Christ, if you have decided to give up world for Jesus Christ, you can't turn back. I mean, at this camp, if you don't get anything out of it, there's few words. Maybe this phrase will keep on, you know, play. Just like, you know, those worldly music that you li used to listen to, constantly, you know, playing around your head. Like you go to a gas station and go to the mall and then you start hearing those old beats and stuff and then it stays in your head and you hate it so much but it's your keep on reminded with this worldly music no turning back should be something that should be playing on your head over and over and over because when you are trying to do something for the Lord devil's gonna attack you harder than ever and they're gonna Devil's going to use everything, everything possible to attack you. And he knows your weakness better than you do. He knows my weakness better than I do. Say if I love cookie, and cookie is the one thing that I can't resist on my own. Do you understand? You cannot do it on your own, right? On your own, you're going to fall. That's something that you constantly forget. And that's like some theme of, you know, you know I, like my life, where when I think I could do it, when I think I'll never turn back, I always turn back. How funny is that? I won't turn back for a few minutes, months, maybe even years. But man, devil knows better than me. I turn back. And once you turn back, no, that pillar of salt, that regret, backsliding, gradual downhill starts happening. Do you realize every time you turn back from the Lord, you're going to go down that gradual hill. I mean, it's not a one, it's not just one moment. You know, I turn around 
It's like I'm up there, you know, up on the top of the mountain. I shouldn't turn around. I turn around, and what happens? I start rolling down, and I can't stop myself. Roll down, roll down, roll down, roll down, and maybe I'll roll down for maybe 100, 200 feet, you know, full of you know, bruises, right? Maybe broken bones. Then I stop. Did I know it was going to happen to me? Yes. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm a, I'm a safe Christian who knows that you reap what you sow. I mean, the Bible says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Romans 8.13. So, you and I know. The hardest thing about you know, changing your behavior is knowing what to do, but you don't do it. You know it's the right thing to do, but you don't do it. You're not supposed to turn back. You're not supposed to turn back to the world. You're not supposed to turn back to the sin that has enticed you and stopped you for years and years and years. And you're not supposed to turn back to where you came from. It is sad when you and I, so-called Bible believers, doing the ministry of God, when people don't see you, when people don't watch you, when you're by yourself, whether it's internal, whether it's external, you turn back to the things that you weren't supposed to. It happens all the time. I mean, if you don't make commitment at this camp that I will never, ever turn back, I can't do it on my own, but with the help, with the strength of Lord Jesus Christ, I am not going to turn back. It could be, it could be your conversation. People are like, oh, Christians don't cuss. Yeah, of course, Christians cuss, right? They say bad stuff. I mean, when you look at little things in your life, does it just come out of your mouth without even, you know, thinking? Like, you're like, okay, what did I just say? You know? You're talking to your spouses. You're talking to your children. You're talking to your loved ones. Suddenly something pops out of your mouth that you should never have said. Why does that happen? Why? Because you keep on turning back to your old nature. You keep on turning back and trying to reach that cookie. Oh no, you don't reach it anymore. You just turn around and you start grabbing it. And you start eating it, eating it, eating it. If you constantly and if you continuously turn back in your backslidden state, What's going to happen? You're going to get to a point where you can't do anything for the Lord anymore. You're like, I'm young. You know, I'm, I'm only like in my 20s, like many of you guys, young men are, young ladies are, right? I'm only in my 30s, you know. I'm just a young kid, 6, 7, 8 years old. However, there's so many faces that we don't see at Great. church. And they were so young. Why? Because they turned back and they never came back. Do you know God will give you so much grace that you take it for granted. And once you abuse all of that grace, when God said time is up and it's time for your chastisement, you read what you sow time, then it's over. Man, you and I have seen so many great people of God who fail because they had to turn back. If you say, Lord, I want to spend more time with you. I want to turn back from worldly things. Don't just say it. Do it. I mean, in order to really turn back from something, you got to stay away from it. And what's the best way to stay away from it? Run away from it as far away as possible. Right? If there's, if there's bear out there, and it's just roaming around in this parking lot. And I know that bear is going to eat me. Um, it's a real big Kodiak bear from Alaska. Don't ask me what, how it's in California. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's roaming there. And then if I take one more step over there, it's going to just crush me and eat me alive. Then I want to go farthest away from it as possible. Yeah. Bears could smell three miles away. Three miles. 
then I want to be away three miles, right? <laughs> you know, if, if that's, that's where a bear is and trying to eat me alive, I want to go three miles from here. I mean, when it comes to your sin, how far away are you away from that sin? I mean, are you three miles away? I mean, how long does it take to run three miles? I mean, 30 minutes? You know, if you're healthy, you know, you walk one hour. <laughs> maybe one hour is too much. No, maybe, I don't know. Right? It, it, might, it might take a long time. If you don't just turn back from those things that's stopping you from serving the Lord and having that right relationship with the Lord, you just got to start running. Just run, right? And if there are, you know, there are temptations in years, just cry unto the Lord, Lord, help me! And then you start running. You just keep on running. You're like, I don't want to hear anything. You keep on running. You know, looking unto Jesus, right? Amen. Hebrews? And then you just keep on running. And then once you run enough, they, they can't smell you anymore. Right? You have to get to a point where those things of the world, the flesh and the devil, can't smell you anymore. The reason you constantly fall into sin, the same sin that you've been doing over and over and over, is because you let that devil, you let that flesh and the world keep on smelling you. You know, if an animal is hungry, they go after food. And how do they find their food? Usually not by their eyesight. It's because of their smell. They could smell it. I mean, how many stinking bears are here right now in this congregation, right? How many people are stinking it up right now where you let the bear just constantly go after you? I mean, thank God for His grace and mercy, right? The bear hasn't eaten you alive yet, but it has bruised you many times. It might have eaten some of your limbs already. And then you're just dragging yourself. Your Christian work is just dragging and dragging. You know, like straddling where you're non-committal, right? You're hurt because the devil has attacked you already. And you're hurt. And you know you're hurt. But instead of getting out of that range, you're just straddling. You're like, you're straddling here. You're straddling there. You're just making a loop and a circle instead of getting further and further away. I mean, the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. I mean, that's what the Bible says. Abstain. You know? I mean, don't even look at it. Why is it that so many Christians are so spoiled that they think, it's okay, I could turn back today, but I'm not going to turn back tomorrow, so it's going to be okay. I'm not going to turn back this weekend, but I'm going to turn back during the week. There's no commitment. Everybody's non-committal now. Even if people are committal, there's no faith in action. You don't do it. You just, you're just all talk. Everybody can talk really well. Honestly, you know, if you really love that subject, whether it's, you know, some people like students, if they love astronomy, they might hate math, or actually they might hate history. They hate talking about history and English. But when they talk about astronomy, like science and math, Man, they could talk all day, all night, and they're trying to teach you calculus, you know, all these formulas and stuff. I say, no, thank you. you know? But they want to talk about it. Everybody would love to talk about it. However, how many of you actually really put into action things that you say? You say, Lord Jesus, you've done so much for me. You died for me. I am going to turn back. I'm going to turn back from my old ways and turn to you. How many of you actually stay? How many of you actually just stay there, but not just stay there? How many of you guys get further and further away from your old nature? Do you have a testimony like the writer of 
I have decided to follow Jesus. You know, Brother Nathan shared it a couple of times, you know, at our church. And some of you might already know the story. And every time I read about it, and it always touches me. I mean, it really touches me. I mean, I have decided, you know, it's originated from India. You know, India. And it was a written based on last words of a man in Garo, Assam. So about 150 plus years ago, there was a great revival in Wales. And missionaries went to Northeast India and to preach the gospel. And they went to the region of Assam. And they were comp I mean, comprised of you know, just primitive people. They're headhunters, right? And you've probably seen some news out there. Some crazy guys just try to go into this, those type of regions and, you know, and then just get killed. And part of American Baptist missions, through them, through their missionary work, one man got saved. One man got saved. And his family got saved. And he was contagious. I mean, he was contagious. He led many people to the Lord. And everybody knew. Right? His whole family and the villagers are serving the Lord. However, just like your life, when you think everything's going well, serving the Lord, chief comes out. You're going to have some chiefs in your life who hate Lord Jesus Christ, who hate your joy in Lord Jesus Christ, who hate the fact that you have something that they don't have. And those chiefs are everywhere. The chief of the village came out and said, you know what, I'm furious. You telling people about Jesus Christ, people getting converted, you, know, you, you must renounce Jesus Christ. You must turn back to your old ways and renounce Jesus Christ or face execution. So what did he do? The chief says, you know what, if you don't renounce Jesus Christ, your two kids will die. Arrow down. What did the man say? Man said, I have decided to follow Jesus. Does that sound like a person who has turned his back on Lord Jesus Christ? Nope. He said, I have decided to follow Jesus. Arrows flew everywhere and two children died. Can you imagine? Especially parents who's listening. Your children is being arrowed down right in front of you. Dying right in front of you. Think about these little children. Right? They're like, chief is saying, renounce Jesus Christ. Or the arrow's going to pierce through their heart. Their face, their legs, arms, their kidney, all of them. Right? Well, when those people throw down the arrows, it's not just one arrow. You know, there's going to be several arrows aimed at the person. And imagine if you see your own child, own children, dying right in front of you. Do you think it's an easy death they're going through? It's not a gunshot to the head. It's an arrow shot to your whole body. And if you get hit on places that's not vital, you're going to die very slowly. You're going to lose your blood and die. But he sees his children die. But he said, what? I'm not going to renounce Jesus Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus. Then the chief, just like many of your life, when the devil says, turn back, gave you option one, you didn't turn back. Do you think devil stops there? I mean, you guys sometimes forget. Sometimes I forget. Oh yeah, I'm so happy. I'm victorious. You know, I won. No. Devil's right there. Devil's happy. Okay, okay, this guy's getting proud. He's becoming haughty. You know, he's relying on himself. No Jesus Christ. You know, he's not relying on the Lord. He's not, you know, praying. He's not, like, humbling himself like he should. Then what happens? Because, you know what? It's time to kill your wife. I mean, imagine, 
right? We have a you know, young couple over there who's going to get married, right? And chief goes, renounce Jesus Christ or your soon-to-be wife will die. Say your marriage is next week, right? Your marriage is next week, you prepare for everything, and suddenly someone comes to you and says, renounce Jesus Christ, or your soon-to-be wife will be, will be arrowed down. Your wife will die. So the chief told this man, if you don't renounce Jesus Christ, if you don't turn back from Jesus Christ, your wife will die. What did he say? He says, oh, not my wife. Did he say, not my lovely wife, not my love of my life, not my other half? No, that's not what he said. He said, though no one join me, still will I follow. I mean, he said, what? Though no one join me, still will I follow. The arrows were shot and his wife died slowly. Getting shot with arrows, I'm sure it's not that. It's not even a, you know, something that you even want to imagine, right? A slow bit, arrows just coming right at you. And then you get hit everywhere. And then you see your wife, you know, along with your two children, dead in front of you. And chief goes, you know, are you ready to renounce Jesus Christ now? I mean, many of you guys, I know for sure that you've gone through a lot and you have given up a lot for Lord Jesus Christ, but you haven't given up everything for Jesus Christ. That's the problem, right? You turn back from most of the things, but not everything for Lord Jesus Christ, right? Whether it be your finances, right? Whether it be your relationship, you know, whether it be whatever it may be, you have given up 95%, but you did not give up that other 5%. That's why you're constantly turning back. Sometimes it doesn't happen every week because you have given up many of the things, but it's happening over and over. It's happening every other month. It's, it's continuously happening. Why? Because you haven't turned back completely. So the chief says, all right, you didn't die yet. Your wife died, your children died. Maybe you don't know the pain. So if you don't renounce Jesus Christ, now you're going to die. What did he say? The cross before me, he says, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. Though that's his testimony, final words that came out of his mouth. Wow. I mean, think about it. This is a man that you and I can learn from. This is a great example of someone not turning back. Lost his two children, lost his own wife and lost his own life. And he said, what? The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. When was the last time you said, the world behind me? Yeah, come on, yeah. World's always in front of you. I mean, world's always in front of you. I mean, you got bills to pay. Mm. You, got, you have health to take care of. You know, you got a career to worry about, right? You have relationship to take care of. But when was the last time you treated world like behind you? It's where world, things of the world, you know what? I'm a stranger here. They're behind me. They shouldn't be something that gets between me and Lord Jesus Christ, ever. They shouldn't. But for many, everybody, that world is always in front of you. That world will make you turn back to Jesus Christ. But this man, he said what? 
the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. And he gave up the ghost. What do you think happened? Do you think chief was overjoyed? He goes, yeah, that man died. You know, great me. This village is free from Jesus Christ. This village is free from the man who was here on earth 2,000 years ago, halfway around the world. You know what? You think he was overjoyed and his village was, you know, having a party? No. The chief got convicted. Wow. Chief was like, wow. I want what he had. Amen. Right? And he was able to testify that I too belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. Think about it. This is a person who hated the man so much, who hated Jesus Christ so much that he killed everyone. I mean, this is an evil man, right? When you see it. But what did he see after he saw this man not turning back for this Savior, Lord Jesus Christ? He said, I too belong to Jesus Christ. Because this man, who we'll see in heaven one day, he says, I have decided to follow Jesus. Though no one join me, still will I follow. Because the cross before me, the world behind me, he said what? No turning back. And you and I, as Christians, have a lot to learn from a man like that, from all the way in the east, in India. He just, I mean, back was probably not even in his, you know, turning back was not even in his vocabulary. Right? Like, why, why, why should I turn back? You know? Lord Jesus Christ, save my soul. Yeah. You know, he has given me everything. Now I belong to him. Why would I turn back? I mean, you know, the greatest thing about when you look at like dogs, you know, especially people who like dogs, you know, they love the owner unconditionally, right? I mean, when the owner says, come here, like, even if like some things of the world are out there, right, most of the dogs, they'll just come to the owner. Like, doesn't even hesitate. And especially, you know, if they haven't seen you in a while, because you are outside the house working or doing other stuff and you come home, what do they do? There might be food around them. They don't care. They run to you because they love you unconditionally. And they're not going to let anything, they're not going to let anything make him turn back. I mean, when I look at this man who wrote, I have decided to follow Jesus, he had that kind of faith. He had that kind of love for the Savior. Where, you know what? I'm going to see my children again. I'm going to see my wife again. And whatever happens to me, I'm going to see my Lord. He's like, he said, worth it for me to turn back. Imagine in your current situation in your life, whatever you're dealing with, if you turn back, you not only disappoint yourself, right? You're disappointing Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever thought about how big it is to you know, disappoint your own Lord and Savior? Kids who love their parents, last thing they want to do is disappoint their parents, right? I'm pretty sure many of you guys, if you love your parents, especially you're growing up, Something that brought joy to you is what? When you did something good and your parents were happy because of it. What brought you, you know, down days? When you don't obey your parents and you do something bad and you disappoint, you disappoint your parents? And you, those are some bad days, right? 
when you don't see smile on your dad and mom because you disappointed them. Human feelings even tells you when you disappoint someone like your dad and mom, it hurts. How much do you think Lord's hurt every time you disappoint him? Man, how many have you ever really thought about what Lord thinks? Lord has gone through all the emotions that you and I could go through. And because you don't care about the Lord, because you only care about yourself and your feelings and your emotions and your well-being, you're like, you know what? Lord, I'm going to turn back on these things and I'm going to turn back to you. I'm turning my back to you so that I could go to these things. But I'll come back to you, Lord. Well, how do you think Lord feels? Right? What if your child told you, Dad, I know you hate me doing drugs, right? You know, I'm just going to go do some drugs my high school years and I'll come back to you. You know what? Mom, I know you hate drinking, right? But I got to live my life. I'm just going to go drink my college days and I'll come back to you. There's no good end. Sin will not let you go once you are addicted. One sin entices you. That's why unless you turn back from it completely, if you are half-hearted, straddling, turning like this, oh, I can't see, you know, but I could kind of see from, you know, corner of my eyes, but I'm still not seeing it, right? I don't know how many fingers I'm holding, right? I don't know how many fingers that he's holding, but, you know, I could walk and then I could just like this, but I could see that, you know, I'm holding five fingers like that. That's not going to work. You have to 100% completely give your heart to the Lord and you have to 100% dedicate your heart and your life and your everything to the Lord where from now on, no matter what comes your way, no matter what comes between you and Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going to turn back. Once you live like that, then who's going to bless, who's going to be blessed the most, right? Those people who need the Lord Jesus Christ. Your testimony, your life will actually be a witness to others where chiefs, like that chief, will say, I too belong to Jesus Christ. And the whole village got saved. Man, I would, uh, when, when I go to heaven, I have to meet the brother, right? And I have to meet all the villagers. I also want to see the chief, right? And, uh, but I'm pretty sure chief, if, you know, when, when you read the Bible and you see Apostle Paul, you know, I'm pretty sure he has that type of feeling, right? You know? But who's to say, you know, you're better than Apostle Paul. Who's to say you're better than this chief, right? You and I are all sinners. Yeah. Amen. Man, we're, we're in the sight of God, you know, you kill a lot of people in your mind. Yeah. You hate a lot of people in your mind. Internally, right, you and I, like, we're the worst. Yeah. You know, we're just sinners. Yeah. Then, when Lord gave you and I this new life, least that we can do is turning back. You and I should never turn back on the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether it's sin, I'm not turning back anymore. Uh-oh, sin's closer to me. Uh-oh, I'm going to start walking away. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm going to start walking, walking further away. Oh, it's getting closer. I'm not going to walk anymore. I'm just going to run now. Right? I'm just going to run away. Right? I'm just going to run. Because even now, and after the camp, man, the sin's going to start running after you. It's going to be knocking on your shoulder. Like, oh, turn back, turn back, turn around, turn around. You know what? I'm just going to, I'm not even going to answer, right? You shouldn't even answer. You, you got to be like a, you, know, you got to be the sprinter. You just start running and running and running. And as you run and you run away and then you never turn back then you can do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to be that person. You don't have to be like Lot, who turned back and did nothing, right? You don't have to be that person who turned back, backslidden, and did nothing for the Lord. 
You don't have to be that person. You could be like this brother. You could be like, you know, forefathers of faith who actually follow Jesus Christ till the end. And this camp should be the time where you dedicate your heart to the Lord, where no turning back. No turning back. Man, if you have to cry, no turning back! You have to cry unto the Lord. Lord, it's too close to me. Help me run. Help me. Help me. You know, I, I, I can't go anymore. Help me, Lord. And then you just run and run and run. And you cry unto the Lord over and over. Look at David. Look at Psalm. How many verses are out there? I cry. I cry unto the Lord. I cry. When was last time you cry unto the Lord? When was last time you cry unto the Lord? Because you didn't want to turn back. When was the last time you cried unto the Lord? Because you loved Him so much. Because things were so heavy on you. Burdens were so heavy on you. You cry unto the Lord. Lord, please help me. And then you just ran to Him. We're looking unto Jesus. Amen. You're looking at Him and you're just running and running. You know what's the best, well, one of the best illustrations, right? Prodigal son, right? Yeah. Receiving that son, right? You and I have lived a lot of wasteful days, wasteful life, because every second, every minute, every hour is the Lord's, and we've ruined it by turning back and going back. It's time for us to really set our heart to the Lord and start crying out to the Lord, Lord, help me, Lord, I want to get closer to you. Lord, I want to have a better relationship with you, Lord. I never want to turn back. Yes. Then your life will be changed. Then you, you will know what this guy wrote. You will understand what he had to go through. And there will be so many people in your life who will see what you have and they want to have it too.